and a woman, woman, woman. Welcome to Every Way Woman. There are some major changes happening in the world. Yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day. Yeah, yeah. Are you in Every Way Woman? Live from Los Angeles, here's Every Way Woman. to baby their kids mm. too much. But then again, I don't have children. Especially so. now. Can but if I did have children, see? I would too. Like, but you it's know what? Like, but it's not I just parents. Know. It's the whole institution of anything our kids touch. Like, for example, the sports teams where everyone gets a trophy, everyone is not awesome. You know, <laughs> everybody is right. not that great. <laughs> okay, yes. How many are like and, and, seven years old, though? Yes. And, so? Well, there is something we to be sad about. You know, you know they, have, I mean, they have to learn <laughs> disappointment. Okay. Yeah. Yes, there's always going to be someone on the team. Learning to be gracious as a loser. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. Okay. And if you don't ever lose, then, right. you know, what's that going to teach you? No, because no, the time right. that real life hits you and you actually do but lose, see, then you, you do. You have to have to learn at some point that you're going to be judged, right? At some point, someone is going to stand in front of you and judge you you know Absolutely. we well, right. we hate to use that word judgment but it's but not it's, a negative it's, thing well, but it's, it's inevitable but it, it doesn't judgment have to be is, a negative word absolutely That's judgment thing. is inevitable I, but when i mean you're raising children i'm raising children a boy and a girl you do you think that they're prepared for the real world you know what i feel bad my my son knew i was working and he stubbed his fingers in the door and i was like that's what you get because i'm working <laughs> like, <laughs> try to make sure that they have a balance and I think as a parent you need to give them a balance you need to yeah. let them still be a child and still give them that balance well, of reality there's this new parenting technique that if the, you can't let the child cry anytime oh, that oh, they oh, need oh, to oh, no, oh, like 24 7 oh, you know oh, physical touch I mean, my and my my kids carry groceries Right. The car, they have to earn a little dollar or five dollars that I give them because I want them to. And when they have a birthday party, we go to Party City together. You pick your cake, mm -hmm. you pick what color you want because I don't want them to be lukewarm and confused all the time. I want them to know directly what it is that they want. So when the time comes, they can go after it and nobody right. else has to make the decision for <laughs> what them. What about I, at one point? We were, uh, my daughter, she was, she was very picky, and we we're trying to get her to start to choose clothes. Now she's really super picky now, mm -hmm. but we, when we took part in that, but we would put lay stuff, I would lay stuff out and go, Pick something. Yeah. And if she didn't pick something, she had to pick what I put on her. Oh, so <laughs> well, there you go. She's like, I want that. No, right. yeah. no, but, <laughs> but, but listen, Anna had an yeah. interesting question. What about what's on TV, though? What is the TV showing say our children? Say. Oh, my God. Our children. There was a TV show, and I won't say the name, but mm -hmm. it was showing the kids how to lie to their parents. Oh, my Lord. See what I, I mean? It was, okay. it was, a, it was a, the mom would say, um, Timmy, go clean your room. I'm going to do it in a minute. They're texting. <laughs> right. And then say, yeah. give me five minutes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, tonight, turn that off right now. Mm -hmm. What but, happened to the magic school bus to the land of wonders of science? Yeah. And, I mean, that's but just... Because TV's that's changing that, a lot. It, it, it is. Um, but I was talking... That we, Our comedian who, who was here, and, and I was talking to a friend who was telling me something very similar, that they use te television shows for learning moments. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this is a prison show. And I was like, you watch that with your kids? They're like, yeah. But I tell them, if you do this and this and this, this is where you end up. This is what mm -hmm. you want to happen to you. So mm -hmm. in, in some well, of those so cases. Well, it's just like that comedian. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Earlier in their thing, I was like, oh, yeah, I've heard that before. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, but, you know, I have to say, I have been exposed to uh, the results of what happens when parents don't, when kids are not told no. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a human resources professional, and I run an internship program specifically for high school students. And I distinctly remember um, we had, you know, we have program guidelines, and they are very clearly communicated. And we had one, one student who was selected for the internship, and they couldn't fulfill one part of like the preliminary requirements because they were going out of the country and you need to be present for it. So I, so they had their parent 
call, you know, first the workforce development center that we work through, they had the, they had the parent call there and ask for an exception. And when they said no there, the parent called me and asked for an exception. And I, and I, first of all, if it's the parent calling and not the student, I already know who's driving it. That's an automatic turnoff. Mm -hmm. But then when I told her no, and now mind you, I'm the program facilitator, the buck stops with me. When I told her no, she she politely asked me, well, is there anybody else I could talk to? Wow. I let her know. I said, you know what? It's your guys' decision whether you know, take this trip or you don't, but I'm letting you know your son has a difficult decision in front of him. And they, ultimately, he didn't do but, it. No, but, what, what's wrong with that, though? No, no, no. I, I see what, what, a lot what's wrong with that. because I well, no, no, no. It, it, what I, is would, to, what? I would call anybody who I need to call it, to get my child into a program. And, and you know what? That, understandable. But when we have 500 students who all wanted to be present mm -hmm. and, you know, and who tried to compete for this and weren't and selected they and they and were willing to fulfill the requirements, right. you know, we have to draw the line somewhere. And, 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 that, and that is something that, that I, when we hear no, it's a good thing. I remember reading a book and someone told me, you can't tell your child no. And I remember thinking, what do you mean? Life is about no. Right. They need to learn how to hear it, how to accept it, and how to process it. Digest it, never. Right. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I... want life to be a land of limitless opportunity. So you must have a lot of yes. Yeah, I so, do. Right. <laughs> and I, I do. And I know, who, I, mean, I know who called the producers to get you on. <laughs> Are you in every way, woman? Are you in every way, woman? For a couple of years, I grew up without a father. My mother had to play both roles as a mother and a father. With us today is a single parent who is not only making a difference in the lives of his children, but also in our community. Stay tuned to Every Way Woman. Welcome to Every Way Woman. We love to give the everyday person a voice, and today we're focusing on fathers. We'd like to welcome Marcus Ham to the show, and I want to know what it's like to be an active participant in your son's life while being separated from his mother. Uh, I think uh, the concept of a co-parent is one that you don't really hear a lot about uh, in society. But when things don't work out between the parents, I think it's always important for those parents to, you know, just still work to take care of the child. How do you do that? Well, you just have to become a daily active part of the child's life. You know, it's, it's, it's mandatory, you know, and you have to be motivated to do that. You know that this child needs structure. They need this, you know, both parents in their life. Uh, it makes such an impact on every stage of their development from from birth all the way up into adulthood. How, how do you, what if one partner is not willing to be an active parent? How do you work over that to stay, to, to as you said, be in part, because it's mandatory. How do you work to that? You know, unfortunately, you know, everyone has different circumstances. It really does take that individual to kind of step up and, and really look at themselves and ask the question, why? Why do, not, why do I not want to be involved in this child's life? You know, is it, is it because of the mother or the father? Mm -hmm. Or is it because I'm afraid? You know, maybe mm -hmm. it's just I don't know what to do. No one knows what to do when they first step into a child's life. Were you, know? you afraid of that? Yeah. I was afraid, but, you know, the way that certain people handle fear, you know, the flight or flight, I think it was the fight. You know, it was, okay, this is here. I can't do anything about right. this. You know, this. You know, I can't change it. You I'm not going to try. It. Right, you embrace it. <laughs> There, it's interesting, though, because so many single moms right now are not letting fathers participate. They're saying, I've got this. I can do it all. I don't need you. And I'm so glad that you're really giving a face to the father and saying, no, you do need me. Yeah. I, we all have our roles in a child's life. What does your role look like? My role for my son, I think, really has a lot to do with giving him a, a mirror image to look at. You know, he, he emulates a lot of the things that I do. Um, he like sees, what? Uh, you know, he, from, from a kid's standpoint, you know, we, we love superheroes. And my son, he's a <laughs> big Batman fan. All right, okay. <laughs> and he calls me Superman. Wow, you know? that's uh, so cute. Yeah, so. Marcus, where did you learn, where did you get this concept from? Where did you learn? The importance of being a father. Well, thankfully, I, I had both parents in my life, and my father uh, played a very strong role and continues to to this day. 
what did he teach you? I mean, really, what did he teach you that you've transferred over to your son now? That's Especially since father. you're Superman. <laughs> exactly. <I> mean, <laughs> Superman. <laughs> Daddy he taught me. He taught me the importance of, of being a man in, in the household. You know, he, uh, even at a younger age, he kind of warned against the potential of, you know, being in a situation where the, the relationship may not work out and how important it is that no matter what, you know, you need to be a father to that child. And Jessica made a good point that oftentimes single mothers say I can do it all. Talk a little bit about the notion that the only man who can teach a man to be a man is a man. What are your thoughts about that? It's the Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do agree uh, to the extent, and of course I understand that this isn't always possible in everyone's life and there's nothing to be held against any child that, that doesn't have a, a father figure mm -hmm. in their life. But I, I have to say that, you know, being a father and seeing the difference in what my role is in my son's life, I know that my role is necessary to him. And I know that it's going to make a very big difference in the outcome of his, of his future. And I think that more fathers need to take on that position and be a daily part of this. So what life. would you say to those deadbeat dads? I would say, you know, it's time to man up. You know, it's time to put aside whatever your personal issues are, no matter what they are, whether they're personal for, from your childhood or whatever is going on between you and, and the person in your life, and just focus on that child. You just know, I, I love what you said about the roles, and traditionally the role of the mother is the nurturer. What would you say is the role of the father in a child's life, the specific role? Uh, I think educator, uh, structure builder, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, children, especially at an earlier age, you know, they, they're wild. <laughs> we all know that. We know and that. Again, they learn so much in such a short amount of time when they're children. Yeah, absolutely. They learn so much. And, I mean, they're, they're following your daily routines. And routine is a very important part of being a parent on a daily How has level. it affected you personally being a father? Well, I mean, before you were a father, you were Marcus. Right. I was Marcus. I, I moved to Los Angeles from uh, the East Coast, and I came with the dreams of film, film and fame. Uh, having a son, you know, it became more about him than it did about me. And my focus went towards what can I do that's going to work for both of us? What's going to guarantee that he has a future and give me the opportunity to, to grow as well? So were you the same man now that you were then? Uh, I can say, you know, in a lot of ways I'm not, <laughs> and I say that because... For the better? Yeah, definitely for the better, you know, because it's not just me anymore. You know, I, I don't make any decisions for myself. I make decisions for the both of us. Um, you know, Marcus, what's the one thing that you want your son to always remember about you? What, what, what's the one thing? I think... When he's grown in. <laughs> I just want him to remember that, that I was always there, you know, and I, and I want him to know that that, that came with the choice that I made and that he's going to have that choice in his time as well. Wow, that's powerful that you are always there. Thank you for always being there, for being that superhero dad. And <laughs> I hope that serves to an example to the fathers that are watching and the mothers let him be a father. Stay tuned with more Every Way Woman when we come back. We'll be back with Everyday Fitness. Are you in every way, woman? Are you in every way, woman? Coming up next, we have Carly, who's going to be talking to us about benefits of weightlifting. I better see you at the gym later after this. Stay with us here at Everyway Woman. We're going to set the record straight on women lifting weights. Mm -hmm. Our fitness expert is here to explain. You know, I've always, I'm actually excited you're here. Yeah. First off, I'm loving your legs. <laughs> well, this comes from weight training, so this is why I'm here. I saw you walk in, I'm like, I wish I had those legs. Yeah. I've always wondered, though, uh -huh. me, you know, yeah. a bit chunkier, so I don't want to turn my fatness into, you know, muscle, like, I mean, it, the, so you're afraid of, like, bulking up, is that what they, Yeah, okay. bulking up, okay. that's what so it's I'm called. glad that you brought that up, because that is a misconception, a lot of women are very afraid of, yeah. of doing. You have to lose weight first, right? Or, no, but the thing is, the thing is, muscle helps you lose body fat. 
Okay. Oh, so I didn't know that. imagine your muscles being an engine, and they're the ones, and body fat becomes the thing that it burns. So the more muscle you have, the higher metabolism, mm -hmm. the bigger the engine, the more calories and more fat that you're going to burn, and more leaner you become. So you're not going to bulk. You're actually going to actually help lean out when you add muscle. Right. Bulking comes from when you have increased body uh, fat and little muscle tissue. So it's actually the opposite. Wow, all yeah. these words, muscle tissue. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm getting it. I'm trying to okay. understand because, Perfect. you know, I've, I don't think I've ever, I mean, for me, mm -hmm. and, and when I go to the gym, it's yeah. like I exercise, I exercise, you mm -hmm. know, but it's most, mostly on the treadmill. So right. this whole new, you know, lifting weights thing is... is a, a bit different Right, but think me. about this. So when you're going on the machine, on the cardio machine, the more muscles that you have, the more, more calories you're burning. Does that make sense? But then, but then you kind of said that um, lifting weights, mm -hmm. uh, you kind of burn calories too? Lifting, oh yeah, lifting weights. I didn't lifting know that. Lifting weights, you're adding to your engine, which is your muscles, lean mass okay. muscles that you have to your body. So the more muscles you have, that's why guys have a higher metabolism because they have more lean tissue and muscles. What's and, metabolism? Um, it's when basically <laughs> your body is using the food or anything that you have, storage, what you eat, and burning it up. That's your metabolism. Ooh. So you have metabolism just to keep you alive right now to breathe. Your body is burning calories, okay? And then when you exercise, it's even higher and you're burning more calories. Mm -hmm. So what's going to make a difference is you have more lean tissue, such as men have bigger engines for the fact they have more muscle, they burn more calories. Um, such as like, I know women get frustrated when they do like a boyfriend, let's say, my boyfriend and I are going to have a little contest <laughs> and lose, you know, body weight and the women are working harder, but the men are barely doing anything and they're losing and, and so they're much all, faster, right? right? For the fact that their naturally, um, natural composition is that they have more lean tissue and they have more testosterone to make them burn faster. So then for example, let's say I go to the gym, uh -huh. what, what kind of, um, uh, weights, would you recommend for me to do? If you're, are you a beginner, right? Total okay, beginner. So if you're a beginner, um, you want to start maybe like uh, 12 to 15 reps. So that's how many times you're going to lift, such so as like if you're going to oh, do some bicep curls, okay, okay. right? But let's say for women, um, they love, they have problems with like the rear, the back of the arm. So tricep exercise is really important. So you could do maybe uh, 12 to 15 reps or t times with the weight where you feel comfortable that you can do it 12, 15 times. So you kind of have to play a little bit. So, and you want to make sure that you're always pushing yourself a little bit so you're getting stronger and you're building muscle so you can burn calories. So do maybe uh, the last few reps of those should you just start feeling a little resistance you feel a little tough what do you do for your legs um <laughs> this comes from uh, squats lunges and heavy by the way heavy lifting so i'm not gonna get i i, I think i look okay right i'm you I, lift heavy ones yeah but in Ooh. order to get these legs i have to i have to push myself challenge mm -hmm. my body challenge to, exactly to get where i need to go mm -hmm. so that's from heavy lifting and consistently without now that we're talking about heavy lifting what yeah. is too much lifting too, um, for anyone maybe somebody that's watching right now too much lifting um i don't know if there's too much i mean if you're doing improper form mm -hmm. so then you don't want to do too much where you're doing improper form you get hurt mm -hmm. um you will see that in the gym as well let's say that i don't want to knock the guys but sometimes the guys their Ooh. ego comes with weight training right and then you'll see them doing crazy like swinging and whatnot and you know um and that comes with you know they just have this challenge and they want to be able to lift that weight but if they do that they can also get hurt mm -hmm. so proper technique is very important to resistance training what can, how, how can they get hurt though from weight training um you could throw your back out okay, you know such as if you're swinging mm -hmm. if you're doing let's say a heavy uh, dumbbell curl right and you swing your dumbbell body curl. right and then you can be like oh my back right and okay. you didn't even use the muscles to do the exercise you used your back is it true that, like, this is one fear I've always had. Yeah. As you get older, mm -hmm. you can't exercise as much. And I'm thinking, like, weights. Right. You can't, you, well, people, have, it's a little bit harder, but actually it's more important that you exercise when you're older because when you get older, your muscles actually atrophy or get smaller and thus your metabolism decreases. Thank you so much. Oh, I you're learned welcome. so much. Thank you for your advice. Of and we will be right back with Every Way Woman. Are you in every way, woman? Are 
Are you in every way woman? With whatever's left inside But did I mention I love your smile and attention You stole my heart like a thief in the night And it's alright And it's alright And if these words don't move You will come off the page Then I've wasted time that I could fade How did I tell you that I wanted you? Only got 26 letters and that'll do The only time to take a chance is today I'm trying to grab it but it's slipping away But I'm telling you when I need you I know I should have put my heart in a cage In a cage I know I should have locked it away I should have locked it away And now we're staring From across the room And it's hard to see through broken glasses It's hard to move forward when you're stuck in the past And I'm begging and pleading And I'm asking you for your reasons I know they're thinking you wouldn't leave I was stuck in a daydream And if these words will move you come off the page Then I've wasted time that I could save How did I tell you that I wanted you? I've only got 26 letters and that'll do The only time to take a chance is today I'm trying to grab it but it's slipping away All I'm telling you is I need you I know I should have put my heart in a cage In a cage Should have locked it away. In a cage, no, I should have locked it away. Should have locked it away. And if these words don't move, you will come off the page. Then I'm wasting time that I could say. How did I tell you that I wanted you? I've only got 26 letters and that'll do. The only time to take a chance is today. I'm trying to grab you, but it's slipping away. What I'm telling you is I need you. I know I should have put my heart in a cage. In a cage. I know I should have locked it away. Everywaywoman.com to find out how you can match our donations of undergarments for needs. This has been an Everyway Woman production. I'm an everyday woman, 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 in every way, yeah, yeah. I'm living my life, 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 living day by day, yeah, yeah. Are you in every way, woman?